Welcome to the Stanford Medicine 25. I'm here with my colleague, Dr. John Kugler. One of the questions we're often asked is, how exactly do you teach at the bedside? How do you use all the information that's on our website to teach? And we've prepared a document uh, that we call the five minute bedside moment, which I'll refer to in this, uh, in this section today. Uh, in that document, you'll find an outline of how exactly we go about teaching. And I think of the five minute bedside moment as the unit of the exam. You can teach for five minutes or you can stack up several five minute bedside moments uh, to make a longer uh, teaching session. And if you break it down, I think the typical moment at the bedside uh, usually has a few common things that are common to whatever you're teaching. Uh, one is I think it's great to model um, explaining to the patient that you're about to demonstrate something. I think it's good to model uh, washing your hands before you do that. Uh, I think it's always fun to bring in a little historical vignette that puts what you're about to demonstrate into context. Uh, for example, when you're talking about the neck veins, talking about how well before we had EKGs and echoes, uh, someone had figured out that atrial contraction was the A wave and, and so on, all by observation. I think it always uh, makes the discussion much more interesting. And so we have a little narrative section, a little prelude, and then you get to the actual physical finding, whatever it is. And I think it's helpful to engage the residents, make them commit. For example, uh, John, if I might borrow your hand, sure. I would ask them to tell me whether they think the patient has clubbing. And if not, why not? And get them to really define what the criteria for clubbing are. And when we've gone through that, then I might say, well, let's say that your patient has clubbing and also turns out to have very tender wrists and ankles as part of their complaint. Hopefully getting them to talk a little bit about hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy and so on. So that would be a great example of a five minute vignette. And in the document on the website, uh, you'll find us having laid that out, broken it down, uh, perhaps to give you some, some insights into how we try to do this. Um, John, is there something that you would like to add? Thanks. Um, what I do find important is to make sure that after you've done a demonstration that you engage your learners in practicing the maneuver and hopefully getting some feedback on their technique. Yeah, I think that's a great point that adding a physical element where their motor system is involved is a nice way to reinforce what they're understanding cognitively. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.